Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, Frosty Does It. Today, we're gonna be doing an oil change in my wife's 2005 Subaru Legacy Outback. It's got the big 2.5 single overhead cam in it. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick how I changed the oil in it. I'll show you what I use. Uh, it's real easy, it takes probably five minutes when I'm not recording. Um, but yeah, follow along if you wanna learn how to change the oil in this car. I made a video on this car back here, this is a 99. Um, basically, it's the same thing as this one, but um, take a look at it if you want to change your own oil and save some money. And these cars are a fourth generation legacy. This one here is a 99, that's second generation. And then this is uh, from 2000 to 2004 is generation three. Then this car is 2005 to 2009. They did change their front ends a little bit uh, in there too, but the main frame and body are the same from 05 to 09. My wife drives it. She's due for an oil change. I change oil every 5,000 miles. I use a synthetic oil. But uh, we live here in Wisconsin, so these Subarus are pretty handy to have in the wintertime. They go through just about anything. You can't get them stuck. They get decent fuel mileage, mid-20s maybe. It's comfortable. It's got all leather interior, heated seats, heated windshield, mirrors, heated everything pretty much. But yeah, we're uh, going to just pop the hood. She's got the single overhead cam. I did do a timing belt on this car recently. Uh, I wish I would have made a video of it, but um, another 100,000 miles do it again. But anyways, 2.5. Grab the dipstick here. It takes like 4.75 quarts. 4.75 quarts. This is your, where your oil goes, this is where you check your oil. And the nice thing about Subarus is pretty much anything with a yellow cap is where you add fluids or check fluids. So it's real easy. You know, you can see all the stuff in yellow. I think that's your uh, transmission or your diff, I'm not sure. Power steering. Should be another one down here too. I think this is your diff. Way down there. You can kind of see it right there. But yeah, it's another reason Supers are just super easy to work on. You know, they even color code all the stuff that comes off where you could add a fluid or check a fluid. Yeah, I'll show you what I use to change the oil on this. All right, this is pretty much all I use to change the oil. I have an oil drain bucket. I have the Rhino ramps, the Wix filter, part number for this car. It's 57712 in a Wix filter. I buy a lot of filters at once, so I always write the year of the car on the filter so I don't remember, don't forget which one goes where. And then I like this oil, I've been using this for a while, this Amazon basic stuff. It's pretty affordable, it's a full synthetic, it's 5W30. I wanna say it's like $23 a gallon. I'll post up prices of the stuff in the video by the time we get it uploaded. It'll flash on the screen so you guys can see what all this stuff costs, but if you're uh, concerned about doing your own oil, you can actually empty your old oil back into your container and you can take it to any like O'Reilly's or AutoZone, Napa, places like that. They'll take your oil for free. Or if you have a older diesel pickup, a lot of times I'll just put it right in there and just run it. She loves it. Well, I'll get the uh, ramp set up here. I'll drive up on the ramps. I'll show you that and then um, we'll just change the oil. Ramps under there, just tuck them up tight against the tire. I did let the car uh, start and run for about five minutes. That heats up the oil in the oil pan. Uh, it gets it nice and warm so it all comes out easier. You're not waiting so long for it to drain. That's a good tip. Now this car, just like my truck and my other Subaru, I've got the um, 
Fumoto drain valve. So this is the drain valve. And all you have to do is move this little lever down and the oil comes straight out. Uh, super handy, you don't have to worry about finding uh, the right wrench or socket on your ratchet to take that off. All you do is flip a lever. I'll uh, put a model number and price of that up here on the screen and probably in the description too. And then right above it is the oil filter. You can see that. It's on Wix as well. The last time I changed it. Let's see if I can move you up here. I think I'll probably close the hood so we can see up in there better. All right, so we got a drain pan. Let's go ahead and flip it down. That's it, that's how easy it is. And then while that's draining, I usually grab a rag and I'll start working on the oil filter and start breaking that loose. This car obviously is supposed to have some type of access panel here. Uh, before I bought it, this was long gone and I'm, I actually don't mind that it really is because it makes it really easy. You just come in here. If the person who changed your oil isn't a huge dick, this should be pretty loose and easy to spin off. It cracks loose very easy. And then you just kind of start spinning her loose and there'll be some oil that'll come down. So once all that is done draining, I will bring you back. All right, she's drained far enough. I'll go ahead and spin this off the rest of the way. Tip upside down. Just let it drain out. And then I usually put this in the box that the new one comes in and just throw it in the trash once it's drained. You know, I've got the oil drained. You know, I've got to wipe this up here a little bit where the oil filter goes. But that's really, you just got to make sure it's clean. It's not a messy project. Like I said, if I wasn't filming, I could literally change the oil in this in five minutes. Aside from letting the car run for five minutes, so maybe 10 minutes. That's all you gotta do, wipe that clean so it's nice and shiny. So something I like to do in all the vehicles that I own, if, if applicable, is I like to fill up the filter with oil. That way when you start your car, you're um, not repriming the entire system. You've already got some oil in there. See if I can do this without spilling it on camera. Just fill it up and it should actually drain back down once you've got it full. You can see a bubble. And I'll just take the old filter and put that in the box. Throw that away. And with a clean finger, just take some of the clean oil and just rub it around the O-ring. That's one of the reasons I was able to get this off so easy without an oil filter wrench. That lubricates that, that seal so it's not a real bear to get off. Next time, if we go to an oil change place, uh, I see. I feel like those guys just tighten them down as hard as they can and screw the next guy. <laughs> All right, let's go throw this back on. Okay, we're back here under the car. I'm gonna close this. I'll show you how easy it is. You just take this little lever, you flip it up, and it's closed. And it's real easy, just go straight up with it. Spin her on. I usually get it snug and then turn it like another quarter turn. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Wipe anything down that you have oil on, and that's really all I needed to wipe down there. A little bit here. And that pretty much finishes up underneath the car. Everything else is pretty easy up top. All right, all we need to do now is pop this oil cap off, spin that guy off, put it over there. Here's a funnel I use, probably a dollar any parts store. Actually, I'm gonna grab a different one. That one's too big. All right, this one's a little better. The 
little tit down here is a little bit smaller. Well, that one fits right down and in there nice. Go ahead and fill her up. So this is a uh, five US quarts. 4.73 liters if you're on the old metric system. So I'll usually put almost all of it in and then just leave just a little bit at the end. I'll show you how much I leave in the jug here. All right, you can see right about here. All right, now we want to take the funnel off. Wipe any oil off, put your cap back on. I'm gonna jump inside the car, start it, run it for a little bit, let the oil circulate, and then we'll come back here, pull the dipstick, and we'll check our level. And you don't have to let this run very long. This is funny. Just to start it, take it off the ramps, you can shut it down. And you can wait a minute or two if you want. Change this oil enough times to know uh, where I like it, but sometimes you want to let the engine oil drain back down in the pan to see what your level's like. We just pull a dipstick. Pause for a second, pull her back out. It's real tough to see, but it's right where I want it. Make sure your caps are on. This is a good time to check any other fluids in your car. Really do appreciate you watching my channel. Um, helps me keep hitting that record button if you like and subscribe or if you comment. Um, motivates me to make these videos. I know some of these aren't super exciting, but hey, there's a lot of people out there that wanna get into maintaining their own car, save some money. That's a great way to do it. Uh, but thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. One last thing that I think is helpful is I just have a dry erase board here in my garage and I just write up the vehicles and you know what they are and how many miles that I need to change the oil at. This helps me keep, just keep track of what I've done. I like this and it works for me. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care.